That to me is just a little California cowboy with a stick that's maybe a wand. Yeah, so music was huge in my family. My Uncle Tim would bring his guitar to any family function, but him and his friends would always show up with guitars and sit around in circles and just play, man, just for hours. Anything from, you know, Garth Brooks to Tom Petty, Creedence Clearwater to even, you know, Michael Jackson and the Beatles, Bob Dylan. Because of that, I was not only just introduced to incredible songwriting from country to rock and roll, at such a, an early age, but introduced to what live music can do in a room. I had always told my family I wanted to do that. I would tell that little Harry Potter cowboy, be thankful for the country roots and hold on to them, and um, never stop believing in magic. That was my first guitar ever from my grandparents. When I told them that I wanted to play guitar at the family functions and the hangouts and all that stuff, they got me an electric because they wanted me to be louder than my uncle at all times. Yeah, when, when you're that age and you get a guitar and you start your first band, there's, there's no question in the world that you are going to be a superstar. And because you're young, you just have big dreams and you're in the best way possible to say it, you're completely naive. There's so many no's that lead you to the perfect yeses. And there's so many no's that help mold you to be prepared for the right yeses that you're gonna get down the road. Uh, but that leaves you jaded with your career in the industry so many times. And if we could all just pretend we were kids again and get in that mindset that no matter what, stadiums, fireworks, the whole nine yards, I feel like people would take more chances. And I, I almost feel like music might even be better as a whole. That is my uncle. That is, uh, that's my biggest influence. That's the guy that taught me how to do it all. I toured in and out of bands from 18 to 22. When those bands broke up before I started my solo career, I went back to school and I got a degree in economics. It was um, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Uh, as soon as I signed up and I was in my first class again, I realized I'm supposed to be doing music. I'm gonna finish because I signed up. So I told my counselor, okay, we're not doing this in two or three years. We're doing this in 18 months and let's go. And I feel like those middle years when I was in my 20s, like right in the middle of my 20s, I think I needed to slow down. I feel like if I jumped right into a, a solo career right then and there, I probably would have stopped earlier. And I think that reset of just focusing on something else for a couple years and then jumping back in full force gave me the time I needed to really figure out what I wanted to do. When I first got that guitar, I was talking about selling places out and all that good stuff. You think about getting gold records and who would have thought it would have finally come you know, that far in the future after so many pivots and turning points. I found out during COVID, the difference had gone gold. I had just done my record deal and we had a bunch of songs lined up of, uh, this is gonna be a great second single, this is gonna be a great third single. Um, what's that first one that's really gonna make the splash that's gonna pave my career to keep going? And we were sitting in a five hour pitch meeting. Every 30 minutes you're listening to a different publisher um, play you their 10 favorite songs for you. And this song came around hour four. Yeah, there's a difference in love, yeah. And I love you and I wanna be the difference. It just felt like me and it felt like something that my wife had said to me a billion times and I just didn't write it down in a song. I was lucky enough to share a couple moments with uh, with Garth Brooks early in my career, and one big piece of advice he told me was always cut the best song, not just the songs you've written. And he goes, so just always have an open ear, write the best songs you can, but record the best songs you've ever heard. So my thing was, if I can't adopt all the dogs in the world, the least I could do is try to help get them all adopted with my platform. We created this thing called Rich Rescues where before shows a couple times a week, I will go and visit a shelter and I will just display the dogs and cats and, and put them on my social media because if somebody is in your town and you're gonna go see a show that night, a lot of times you'll go and look at their social media. Uh, what is my favorite artist doing in town today? They go to my favorite park, they go to my favorite stores. Uh, and what they're seeing is I'm actually at their local shelter and they're seeing adorable animals that need homes. Just uh, keep doing it because it's making a difference. And it was uh, it was so new in this picture, but it's, um, it's, it's truly making a difference and 
people love it as much as you do, so don't stop.